Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah, Praise Jesus. Praise God. Amen and amen. Praise God. God bless you. Welcome to these 31 days with the blood of Christ. I'm Apostle Lee Robinson of the Sons of God Embassy. We honor you and thank you for joining us tonight. I want you to get a hold of your family and friends because I believe that this interest into this year through the blood is going to set you up for the most explosive explosive release of heaven that you have ever experienced. Uh, in Jesus' mighty name, I'll be doing more teaching and, and why I believe that and why the Holy Spirit pricked my heart to do this and that we enter into 23 through the blood. Now, the next three days, we're going to be dealing with repentance. Now, on the third day, we're going to go to, to, to court. We're going to go to the courts of heaven, and we're going to release, and we're going to, we're going to decree the blood. We're going to repent for our lineage. Glory to God, because I, I, I don't want anything to hinder me from receiving this year. Glory to God, in Jesus' mighty name. So join me as we uh, uh, take these 31 days in January as we teach on the blood, declare the blood, bring everything that you want destroyed by the blood of Christ. We're going to declare the blood. We're going to repent for our lineage to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. On receiving this year. We glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, mighty name. So join me as we uh, uh, take somebody, uh, please. Your, 31 days of January, as they you locate the blood, there. declare the blood, bring hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Please be mindful of, of your devices as we begin to teach because people are, are ready to receive, they can't hear. When, so just be mindful of your devices, make sure all electronic is off, make sure you're not near another person's phone because it will release those echoes that will hinder people from receiving. Okay, in Jesus' mighty name, we want to say thank you again for chiming in. We want you to share this broadcast so that someone else, because 23 is a year that I believe that God wants to do incredible things, unseen things, unheard things. And, and even if things have not entered into the hearts of man, I believe that this is that year. And I believe one of the most powerful ways that we can apprehend anything from God is through the blood of Christ. And I believe that the, one of the most powerful weapons that God give us gave us is the blood of Christ. So glory to God in Jesus' mighty name. Tonight, we're going to begin teaching from the subject, the law of repentance. It is very important that, that the body of Christ, I want to say this because the Holy Spirit said this to me over and over and over. And he was saying to me that it's important that the body of Christ return to repentance because it, they, they, the spirit of pride it has grown and is growing strong in the body of Christ right now. And that spirit robs men and women of repentance in Jesus' mighty name. So we're going to begin tonight. Blitz, if you would, grab me 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. Grab the NIV version. Uh, hallelujah. We're going to begin with 2 Corinthians 7 and 10. And prophetess, if you would, grab me Matthew 4 and 17. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Because one of the enemies that stops the body of Christ from entering into, watch this now, because this is very powerful. One of the things that stops the body of Christ, or any individual for that matter, from entering into the state that God will always appear to them, is the, is the state of humility. One of the spirit that stops us from entering humility is the lack of repentance. Because repentance, repentance proves the level of your humility. I'm going to say that again. Repentance proves uh, 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 the level of your repentance. And repentance is the evidence that you are and that you understand humble or being humble or, or being uh, in the state of humility. When we walk in a state where we don't repent or we feel like we don't have to repent, 
It gives permission for pride to grow and to manifest and to mature, and it robs the body of Christ of the glory that is scheduled to fill the whole earth. In Jesus' mighty name, a repentant person is a person that will always be reinvited into the presence of the Father. So let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 7 and 10, and let's watch what the scripture says about repentance. Go, prophetess. Go, Elder Bliss. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. Mm. But worldly sorrow brings death. Wow. See that? What it, it, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. That's godly sorrow. Godly sorrow will always lead to repentance. But worldly sorrow will always lead to, to the individual wanting to be seen, want to be recognized. And we've seen this great example with Saul, King Saul. When, when, when he disobeyed God, King Saul, when, 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 when the prophet came to him, when the prophet came to him, Saul said to the prophet, let's go in front of everybody. See, that's royally sorrow. Royally sorrow is, is, is being seen or want to be seen by the world. But godless sorrow, I want you to write this down and hold on to this very thought. Godless sorrow does not need an audience. Glory to God. I'm going to say that again. Godless sorrow does not need an audience. Worldly sorrow calls for an audience. So true repentance does not need an audience. Hallelujah. It just needs the ear of the Father. Hallelujah. Now, when the blood of Christ meets your repentance, the life of God can appear before you. I'm going to say that again. When the blood of Christ meets your repentance, the life of the Father makes its appearance to you. Okay? So this idea, because there's a, there's a teaching in the body of Christ that we, we have abused this teaching on grace. And, and, and the abuse of teaching is that we don't have to repent, that Jesus died on the cross, and that we don't have to repent. That is a deceptive teaching. Glory to God. And so we have to remove those teachings and reteach, reintroduce godly sorrow. Because godless sorrow will lead to repentance and repentance, watch this, when repentance is seen by the blood, the blood partners with that repentance and produces the very life of the Father. Hallelujah. That's why I believe that God is calling us to enter into 23 because you and I, God wants to appear to us. God wants us to receive something that has never been received before in your lineage. God wants to destroy something that's trying to destroy you. God wants to remove something that is taking the place of his very presence. And I believe that when we take these three days of repentance, that when we take these 31 days of, of visiting with the blood, hallelujah, a ministry on the blood, that after these 31 days, I believe, glory to God, that you will be an unstoppable person. Hallelujah. I believe that this year will be the year, glory to God, that catastrophe, chaos, and destruction will be all around you, but you, glory to God, will be divinely protected by the blood of Christ, and you will walk with great authority, great presence of the Holy Ghost, and great power and authority of that same spirit, hallelujah, that raised Jesus from the dead shall quicken your mortal body. But I believe it begins with the level and depth of our repentance. So I invite you, glory to God, these three days to join me, hallelujah, along with other people that's on this line as we repent before the Father, as we go before heaven and begin to repent of sins that we've done, our forefathers, hallelujah, our government leaders, hallelujah, and even spiritual leaders, glory to God. And now repentance, write this down, true repentance once you reach the level of true repentance, 
You do not ask questions on the Holy Spirit or from the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit leads you to repent for other people who are not a part of your destiny. Did you hear that? True repentance. Once we enter into repentance, when we hit that level, glory to God, I believe that God uses that level, that individual, that humility to reach other people who are, are, are still walking in pride, still walking haughty before the Lord, that he can use you. How do I know? Because Isaiah said, Isaiah says, when he saw the Lord high lifted up, Hallelujah. Isaiah said, I am a man of unclean lips. I live amongst men of unclean lips. His repentance took him beyond his own affair, and he started repenting for others. Hallelujah. This is what God needs. Because that repentance saves nations, saves cities, saves governments, saves people. Because God can use your repentance, hallelujah, to reach another individual that don't even know him. And then God, through that, can reach. Remember when uh, 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 Apostle Paul, hallelujah, orchestrated Stephen's death. That's right. When you go read the book of Acts, you'll see that Apostle Paul orchestrated. He, he was watching as they were stoning Stephen. And Stephen began to repent like Jesus. And the scripture says that the, the father stood up. Hallelujah. And, and Stephen's face was like an angel, but he repented. He repented for what they were doing to him. And in the next chapter, guess who get reaches? Apostle Paul. I believe because Stephen's repentance reached the salvation of Apostle Paul. I believe, saints, we are in that level that when our repentance become full, our repentance reaches that level, glory to God, that we can begin to, to we can begin to reach others that have hard heart and does things, done things that, that is contrary to the word of God. But your repentance can be the salvation of another. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory. Glory to God. So let's take a look. So repentance is key and valuable. So as we are going into 23, let's enter through the blood. Now, let's take a look at this. Matthew 4, 17. Blitz, if you would, give me Matthew 3, verse 1 and 2. Okay, let's go. Matthew 4, 17. What does this say, prophetess? Matthew 4 and 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach. And to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, who's teaching? Jesus. Is there anyone greater than Jesus? No. No. Jesus' first message on planet Earth was repent. So if repentance is unnecessary, why was Jesus preaching? Amen. Come on, somebody. Have we been so foolish with knowledge? Have we been so foolish with earthly wisdom? Have we been so foolish with schools and, and theologians that we think that we can change what Jesus began? Jesus' first message to the earth, Jesus' first message to mankind was repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's his first message. Hallelujah. Let's take a look. Watch this. Matthew 3, verse 1 and 2. What does it say, Elder Bliss? In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Wow. What did he say? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Is that right? Who, who's preaching this? Yes. Who's preaching this? John the Baptist. This is John. John the Baptist's message. John the Baptist's message was repent. Jesus' message, first message, was repentance. But the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
Now, if if repentance is out of season, so is Jesus, and so is John, and so is your word of God. So this, this notion that grace gives you authority to not repent is a teaching that does not understand the word of the living God. Now, Jesus and both John said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so the Holy Spirit began to minister to me, and he said this, that the blood of Christ, now I want you to hold on to this thought, and I want you to put it somewhere, because it is crucial, because we need to destroy this teaching that is that is ruining the body of Christ and ruining people and giving the adversary legal right to enter them into pride. Because pride is the only spirit that tells you that you don't have to repent. This is what the Holy Spirit says, that the blood of Christ seeks for repentance. So the blood of Christ looks for repentance. The blood of Christ expects repentance. Then he gave me this thought. The blood of Christ does not excuse us from repentance, but honor us. So the blood of Christ, the shedding of the blood, the cross, does not excuse you from repentance. In fact, it's the opposite. The blood honors the repent, the repentance and the person that repents. The blood seeks for repentance. So on the contrary of teaching that is out now, the body of Christ, in many circles, that we don't have to repent, it is an insult to the blood of Christ. It is an insult to the blood of Christ. Because the blood of Christ partners with your repentance. And as it partners with your repentance, it, it begins to cause you to experience the life of God. Without repentance, the blood of Christ cannot introduce the life according to what is in the blood of the Father to you. That's powerful. I'm going to say that again. Without repentance, the blood of Christ does not have authority to introduce to you or cause you to experience the life of the Father that is inside of the blood. Elder Blitz, give me Leviticus 17 and 11. See, the, the blood is carrying something, and the blood can't release it if the blood doesn't see or hear or experience true repentance. We're not talking about worldly sorrow. We're talking about godly sorrow. When godly sorrow, my God, hallelujah, when godly sorrow is experienced or met by the blood, the blood then can unfold or cause that individual to experience the Father according to how the blood is carrying it. Hallelujah. Leviticus 17, 11. Go, uh, Elder Blitz. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Okay. Now, uh, Blitz, your phone is breaking up. So listen to this. The life of the flesh is what? In the blood. Okay, so the first thing that the blood of Christ is carrying is the life, the quality life that was in Jesus Christ. Now you say, what kind of life was that? I'm, I'm so excited because the scripture says it was God in Christ reconciling the world back unto himself. So it's God in Christ. So it's God in that blood. So the first thing that the blood does Watch this. It says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it upon the altar. Now, this is very crucial because you need to see this. This is the, the altar proves that repentance is necessary. Because the altar is where the individual or the thing died, where it was sacrificed, where it laid down his life. Hallelujah! The altar is where the priest would slay the animal. The animal's life would end right there. Oh, praise God. 
So it is where we, is where when we enter the altar, we are saying to the Lord, I'm surrendering my life for yours. Hallelujah. I'm laying down my life for yours. What is that? That is an act of humility. It is an act of repentance. So the altar proves that repentance is needed for the life of that blood to be experienced by the one that's laying itself down on the altar. Woo! Glory to God. Then the third thing that the blood can do, that's what I'm saying tonight, you have to pay attention. You have to enter into this year through the blood. The first thing the blood brings is the life of that thing. The second thing the blood is doing is looking for the death of that individual that's pursuing that blood. Let me see you on the altar. Let me see the level of your repentance. Let me see the depth of your humility. Let me see how much you're willing to give up for this life. Then the blood can do the third thing, which it says in Leviticus 17, 11, it is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. See, these are the levels, I believe, that when we, these 31 days, that we are about to see the greatest harvest in Jesus' mighty name because of the blood, because we are pursuing the blood, and because we are teaching the blood, and we are receiving from the blood, and we are submitting to the blood. We are about to see the harvest of the blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. So first, what? The life. Then what? The altar. I have given it upon the altar. What, what is he saying? He's saying that life is now on the altar. Now come merge with that blood. That's what God is saying to us, oh, glory to God, in 2023. This is what he's saying to us in this entrance. This is what he's saying to us. Jesus, what, was on the cross. And the cross is what? The highest altar known unto man. So Jesus is inviting us to come to that altar. The blood is on that altar. Now merge with that blood. Now merge what? With that blood. But you can't merge with that blood if you're walking in pride, if you're walking in arrogance, if you're walking in unforgiveness, if you're walking in haughtiness, you can't merge with that blood because that blood, hallelujah, is the most humble relief known unto man. The Bible said that Jesus even humbled himself unto the cross. Yes. So humility is already in the blood. So it's looking for the depth of your humility. So when you humble yourself on that altar, when you come this evening and tomorrow and the next day repenting, hallelujah, then the level of that life that's in that blood can explode in your life. Glory to God. Amen. Now, the blood does not excuse us from repentance. But rather, the blood looks and seeks for our, our, our repentance so that the humility that's already in the blood can begin to now heal us, deliver us, and bring us to a place where God himself can experience us the way Jesus experienced the Father himself. Hallelujah. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Okay. Uh, 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 Blitz, uh, get me uh, uh, 1 John. 1 John uh, 1, verse 7 through 9. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Okay. And then prophetess, get me Romans 3, verse, verse 24 through 25. Okay. As we are entered into this year. Saints, I want you to bring everything. I want you to bring your whole heart. I want you to bring your soul, and we're going to thrust it upon the altar so that the blood of Christ can begin to merge with us so that we can see a year, glory to God, that we deserve that's already been paid for by the blood itself. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 You see, anybody that armored themselves under the mighty hand of God through repentance will see the harvest of God through the blood of Christ. Now, let's take a look at this. First John 1, 7 through 9, because we need to destroy 
this false grace teaching that robs us of repentance, okay? And we're going to see that grace, you're going to see that grace and the blood is in partnership. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Okay, 1 John 1, 7 through 9. What does it say, Prophet uh, Elder Blitz? But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Wow. If, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow. So as you can see, the blood awaits an individual that realizes that I have sin. You see, if you say you have no sin, the scripture says you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Hallelujah. So as you can see, the blood awaits. It is waiting for an individual to realize, okay, something that's not happening, I'm not increasing, I'm not expanding. It's possible that it's sin. And the blood is waiting to remove that stumbling block, to remove that blockage so that you can walk in the abundance that Jesus claimed that you're supposed to walk in. This is why I believe that God wants to enter into 23 through the blood. Because I believe that God, God's desire is that we remove everything that previously stopped us in the prior years Glory to God, that we're supposed to have been advanced or increased or multiplied in. But this year, we've taken 31 days and we're going to remove every stumbling block. Hallelujah. We're going to remove everything that's in our lineage that's given the adversary legal right to hinder or stop us, alter, and even cause us to miss destiny. The power of the blood. And I want you to write this down because I want you to put this on. One thing I've learned, the adversary did not plan for the blood of Christ. He did not plan for it. And because he didn't plan for it, and because he didn't understand the mystery that God tucked inside of the lamb, hallelujah, my God, you ought to be excited that Lord. God took a mystery inside of a lamb and he confused the adversary. He mm. confused them. Because the scripture say, had they known, they wouldn't crucify Jesus. Yes. So the blood is a, is a weapon that the adversary can't plan for and can't match. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So every time you unleash or plead or apply the blood, you're releasing a weapon that the enemy can't plan and the enemy has no match for. Hallelujah. Glory. This makes you victorious. Now get this because you need to hear this part. This makes you victorious, not so much because of the blood itself, but because of the level of your repentance. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory. He who offered himself under that blood becomes a mighty warrior with that blood. The level of your repentance, the level of your humility gives depth, authority, and power to the release of the blood whenever you apply. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's mm. why we should be excited. We should be excited. And this is something that the Holy Spirit um, said in my heart. We should be excited about repentance. But we, when we hear repentance, we automatically take on, take on the spirit of guilt or shame. What have we done? What we've done? It's not about that. 
You have to remove that climate from your thought pattern, from your heart. And you must see that your repentance gives you an opportunity, hallelujah, to partner with the blood of Christ. Yes. That is a that is a moment. Our repentance is a moment for us to partner with one of the greatest weapons known unto man, the blood of Christ. So every time you repent, don't look at it so much as what you did or how you did it or, or who, you know, who in the lineage. No, don't look at that. Look at it as a, as a moment of merging. That's why he says, I have put it, placed it upon the altar uh, for you. Okay, so it is a moment that that, that 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 the individual that's going to the altar can merge with the blood that's on that altar and become one with that blood, and then you unleash the authority of that blood to fight for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Okay, so let's look at this. Okay, uh uh prophetess, what does Romans 3? 24 through 25 said, and uh, Blitz, get me Romans 6 and 1. Romans 3, 24 and 25. Yes. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Mm. Now, look at this. Grace and the blood are partners. You see what that, look at, read verse 24 one more time, uh, prophetess. You have to see, that's why the enemy wanted, this is clever by the enemy. He, 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 he crept up. Titus said that things have crept into the church of unaware. So what the enemy did was enter into the heart of men in the body of Christ and started teaching grace in a way that it removes you from partnering with the blood. Wow. So they started teaching that grace covers your sin, that, you, that, that, that you're, under, you're no longer under the law, but you're under grace. Mm -hmm. but, but grace never excused you from sin but rather grace was waiting on blood to arrive glory hallelujah glory to God grace never was designed to cover you cover your sin that's not what grace was designed to do grace and the blood are partners look at Romans look at Romans Romans 3, verse 24. It, the grace and the blood are partners, and they are waiting for our repentance. Grace never was meant to be a mechanism that will remove you from repenting to the Father and Jesus Christ. Verse 24. Go, prophetess. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Stop. Being justified by what? Grace. grace. See, grace justifies the redemption that's in Jesus. Grace don't remove you from that redemption. It justifies when an individual submit to that redemption that's in Christ. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. So grace is the justification that you've been redeemed. Come on. Hallelujah. Grace is the justifier that the blood is on you. Grace is the justifier that you've been fellowshipping with the blood. Grace is the justifier that you repented and now the blood has cleansed you. But grace doesn't cleanse you. Grace justifies that you've been cleansed. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So this, this notion that grace alone is the one that forgives you. No, grace is watching and grace needs to see the blood. 
Grace needs the seed of submission. Grace needs the seed of repentance. Then grace justifies you. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Grace does not act on its own. Grace responds to a blood bought believer. Grace responds to a blood covering individual. So grace and the blood are partners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. How many hear me tonight? Are you, are you hearing this? See, yeah. see, you have to understand. That's why your repentance is so important because your repentance disturbs the kingdom of darkness. Your repentance frightens the kingdom of darkness. Your repentance sheds light on the kingdom of darkness. Your repentance makes you escape the kingdom of darkness. It is your repentance that is the force that frightens the enemy. And when you repent through the blood, it shakes the very foundation of the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Yes. So a blood-bought believer that have submitted and repented and covered in the blood, oh, you shaking the kingdom of darkness. You shaking it. You, you bringing fear to that, to that kingdom. That's why he had to get in the church and confuse people with that grace teaching because now you make grace and the blood warn against each other when all along they are partners. Hallelujah. Glory, Glory. to God. With Romans, Romans 3, 24 and 25. One more time, prophetess. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 3, 24 and 25. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Wow whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Wow. Now, let's get a clear picture on grace so that you won't think I'm just teaching lopsided. Let's get, get a clear picture on grace. Uh, 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 Elder Bliss, read me Romans 6 and 1, because you need to understand that that grace teaching is a polluted, watered-down, insulted word on grace. You just saw that grace itself is a justifier, but grace, grace itself looks for something through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. How are you redeemed? How are you redeemed? The blood. There is no remission of sin unless it is the shedding of the blood. Amen. He says the grace is justified through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So Glory. how are mankind redeemed? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Paul put it this way in the book of Acts. There is no other man under heaven whereby men are to be saved. That's it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no one else coming. There's not another Savior. There's not another Savior. There's not another Savior. Jesus Christ is alive and he saved mankind. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Yes. It is through him and through and by his blood. And when we repent and humble ourselves, the blood of Christ partners with that repentance and grace justifies it and then get this grace highlights you so that heaven can now unleash in your life glory glory hallelujah that's why this month is important for you and I that we come out this month with our first fruits and by the way the blood of Christ is a first fruit that we've been fellowshipping with a first fruit the blood that when we come out this month, hallelujah, what a people, what a sound, 
What a worship. What a power. What an authority that you will walk in because you have been with the blood for 31 days. Hallelujah. You ought to be excited. Praise God. Praise God. So let's get a clear picture on grace. Okay. Romans 6 and 1. What does it say, Elder Bliss? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm. Wow. Look at it. Paul said, God forbid. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He, that, he or she that uh, continue in sin is, insults grace. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't give grace permission to cover you, but if we continue in sin, we actually insult grace. So this notion that grace allows you to continue the way you are is actually an insult to grace. Oh, wow. It is an insult. So all of you that are following that false grace teaching, I call upon you to repent. Exit that teaching. Remove yourself from that false teaching. Because grace and the blood partners and anybody that teaches you that you are under grace, that grace, does, you do not have to repent. And there's teaching out there that say, that state that we don't have to repent now. That is a lie from hell and it's robbing you. Now we're going to see an enemy of repentance. And there's an enemy of repentance. Okay. Elder Blitz, uh, prophetess, give me Proverbs 16, 18 through 19. Proverbs 16, 18 through 19. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Proverbs 16, 18 and 19. Yes. Hallelujah. Pride. Yes. Pride goeth before destruction mm. and a haughty spirit before a fall. Mm. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly that to divide the, to divide the spoil with the pride. Wow. See, humility destroys pride. I want you to write this down and put it somewhere. The spirit of humility robs pride of, of setting up or, or releasing its roots in your heart. I'm going to say that again. Maybe that'll hit somebody in their DNA. <clears throat> That's why you need repentance. Repentance leads to humility. Humility is the only spirit that robs pride of releasing its roots in the individual heart. You see, once pride releases its roots in an individual heart, then it can lead that person to destruction. And guess what happens after pride? Pride now is, is in, inside of pride is a haughty spirit. You see what I'm saying? Pride leads to pride leads to a haughty spirit, and a haughty spirit, you see, keeps an individual on the same path so that pride can destroy the individual. See, that's how the that's how the person gets destroyed because of pride and haughty spirit and pride work together. But you rob pride of its strength, of its of its power when you repent. And you come before the blood of Christ, you rob pride of releasing its roots in your heart so that you can be set free by the spirit of humility. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wow. You see, pride is the enemy of repentance. Pride rules and heart that is wounded. I'm going to say that again. Pride rules a heart that is wounded. That's why pride always seeks an opportunity after pain has been inflicted on the individual. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you hearing me tonight? 
See, pride seeks that moment. It seeks. As soon as the individual gets get pain or hurt or rejected or set back, pride now begins to move on the individual. And guess what it does? It releases the haughty spirit. Okay, because pride got a plan for the individual. See, pride has a plan for you. Pride knows that it's going to lead you to destruction. So pride, what it does, what it, it that's why I'm saying the roots. See, humility robs him. It robs that spirit of unleashing the roots in the hearts of that individual. Okay? The, and you see these individuals, you know what I'm saying? And you heard that old saying. You, you heard it. And really, that's not a good saying when people said that. What they really was describing pride. When people used to say this, oh, they said in their own ways. How many heard that? Come on, talk to me. Yes, yes. Oh, they said in their mm -hmm. own way. That's not a good good statement. What you're really defining is an individual that has now been overtaken by pride and roots from pride is now in their heart. Praise God. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. But you can be set free by simply submitting and repenting and applying the blood. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Yes. Now you see why God won't. Now, I need to say this because that's why we're doing three days and on the third day we're going to go to the courts of heaven. Pride is transferable. Now, you say, well, Apostle, how, how do you say Okay, because when Lucifer fell, he fell because of pride. God says, what is that you hid in your heart? Pride. What, what did Lucifer, Lucifer didn't repent? Is that right? Hello, talk to me tonight. Lucifer didn't repent. So pride robbed him of his place in heaven. And the Bible said that his name was not even found no more. Okay? So his place was no longer located in heaven. Watch this now. So he fell to earth. In fact, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall as lightning. Now, watch this now. He has an encounter with Eve. Pride is having a conversation with Eve. Woo! My God. Did you hear that? Pride is having a conversation what? With Eve. Mm -hmm. Pride now changes what Eve sees. Mm. Now, I'm going to show you. Now, watch your haughty spirit. Watch this now. Eve takes on the fruit. Eat it and give it to her husband. Is that right? Now, watch pride. Satan don't repent. Now, God now shows up. Watch how Adam addresses God who created him. That woman you gave me. That's a haughty spirit. That's an haughty spirit. Mm. And haughty spirit challenges every time correction comes. That's an haughty spirit. That woman you gave me, he now saying it's God's fault. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Are you Jesus. seeing it? Adam Jesus. now saying it's your fault. You gave me her. I wouldn't yes, be in this if you wouldn't have gave me her. That's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now, he's mad with God for a gift that God gave him. He's blaming God. That's pride. He's blaming God. Pride blames everybody but themselves. Y'all know who I'm talking because you got people like that all around you. Come on. Everybody at fault except for them. They never at fault. They never wrong. Come it's on. never my fault. That's pride. Mm -mm -mm. That's pride. Adam is blaming the creator for what he done. Now what has happened? Pride has transferred to Adam. Pride is transferable. Mm. Wow. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
And Adam and Eve never repented to God. Why? Because pride would not allow you to repent. And God said something to me. He said, son, that spirit is in the body of Christ right now. It's in the body of Christ right now. It's robbing my people of repentance. And they'll keep going, keep doing, keep saying the same thing, even though they're in error. That's pride. Pride is transferable. And we got to get rid of that seed from the body of Christ. Amen. Pride is the enemy of repentance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to wrap this up in Jesus' name today. How many see in this tonight? Am I making sense to anybody? Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now there's a face of humility that draws the blood. My God. I'm going to say that again. There's a face of humility that draws the blood of Christ. And the blood gets excited when it sees this face. Elder Blitz, get me Psalm 51, verse 17. Psalm 51, verse 17. And then prophetess, get me Luke 23, uh, verse 39 through 43. Praise God. Okay? Okay. The blood looks for this. And we're going to see that face in Jesus' mighty name. And when I say face, I don't mean a look from you. There's appearance. That's what I'm talking about. When I say face, I mean appearance. There's an appearance. Humility has an appearance. I often say that humility is a spirit that's very difficult to mimic. You either humble or you're not. Because at some point, come on, somebody, you can't keep faking humility. Pride can tell on you. Because pride refused to hide itself. Because pride wants people to know I'm in charge. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so humility, I often say humility is a spirit. It's very difficult to, to, to mimic. Uh, because it, because when pride is in the individual, it, at some point, it got to make its appearance. It got to prove that he or she is in charge, that I'm the one that made this happen. I'm the one that did all this. I, if it wasn't for me, if it wasn't for, you see, I, 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 what is it? I, pride is I. Look what I've done. Whoa, praise God. Hallelujah out there. Amen. Okay, let's take a look. Let's look at this appearance. Because, yes, humility has an appearance. And I pray, Jesus Christ, that, uh, that we this month, that we reach this level here, that fountain in Psalm 51, verse 17. Let's go, Elder Bliss. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. Mm -mm. A broken and a contrite heart, oh God, thou will not despise. Oh my God. You did you did that scripture grab you? It says he would not despise that. My God, that thing jumped out to me. Whenever God sees disappearance, whenever the blood sees disappearance, the blood gets excited and can't wait to covenant with this. Disappearance. You see. One more time, Blitz. Read it one more time. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. See, brokenness unleashes the healthiness of the blood. Brokenness unleashes the power and life of the blood. When you are broken, my God, the blood floods a heart of an individual that is broken. This is why David remained the king, because he was broken. This is why Saul didn't remain the king, because he was not broken. He was pride. Saul is the image of pride, but David is the image of humility. Though 
David was not sin free. His humility gave him longevity with the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Gave him longevity with the Father. His brokenness, the Bible said, that the scripture says that David was a man after God's own heart. My God. Why? Why? Because he, he had this appearance, and God is attracted to that appearance that found in Psalm 51 and 17. Now, I don't want to lose nobody out there. When I say that, that David had a longevity with the blood, I'm not talking about the blood of Christ. I'm talking about the life of the Father. Okay? Because I don't want to lose you out there thinking that, you, that he's teaching that the blood was in the old No. The, the blood is attracted to humility as just like the Father is attracted to humility. When you look at Psalm 51, it is describing an appearance that brings God immediately to you. Because there's something that God wants to do through the blood to you and I this month. He wants to give us instant breakthrough, instant deliverance, instant healing. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and it Hallelujah. comes through when we are broken. So this month, as we start, I want you to reach that appearance so that you can have that instant. Now let's go take a look what I'm talking about, okay? And we'll close out. Luke 23, verse 39 through 43. Go ahead, prophetess. Amen. Luke 23, 39 through 43. And one of the evildoers who were hanged was speaking evil of him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. Wow. <laughs> and he wow. said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, unto thee, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, I, I, I just want to ask you a quick question. Jesus said to the man today, but the man ain't died yet. Mm -hmm. The man's still on the cross, but Jesus is telling him, you already in. <laughs> Glory to God. See, the, the first man is the image of pride. He's arrogant, and he's telling Jesus that you need to prove who you are. Get down and then take us with you. My God, hallelujah. He's prideful. See, pride will always insult the moment of freedom. Ooh, glory. Ooh, somebody <laughs> hit me. Somebody hit me tonight. Pride will always insult the moment that God has orchestrated your freedom. Jesus. God orchestrated that man's freedom and pride insulted that moment. But humility will always rebuke arrogance. Right. Hallelujah. Humility will always rebuke an invitation to die with pride. Hallelujah. My Lord. See, this is the power of of humility. Humility is rebuking pride. 
Humility is saying, I'm not dying with you. I'm not following you. This is Come what on. some of you need to say this month. This is what you need to say this year. I refuse to die that way. I refuse to lose what God had for me. I refuse to not accept what God got for my lineage. I re- you need to rebuke the spirit of pride that's inviting you to follow your forefathers, to follow your ancestors, to follow those that walking in error. You need to rebuke that and say, I refuse. Jesus, I deserve what I'm about to get, but have mercy upon me. Yes. That's what that man said. Yes, yes. You know what he did? He took ownership of his sin. He took ownership. God will always honor a man or woman who take ownership of what they've done wrong. And then when they repent, he honors that. That man took ownership and then humbled himself in that moment. Pride will always insult the moment of freedom. Tonight, I want to invite you to accept this moment that the blood have called out for you and I. I want to invite you to pray this prayer what I'm praying tonight. And then begin this journey this year of a year of explosion, expansion, and increase like never before. Tonight, I want you to cut covenant and partner with the blood of Christ. I want you to pray this prayer that I'm about to pray. And I want you to receive the spirit of humility so that you can rebuke every time pride gives you an invitation to follow the road of destruction. Hallelujah. Jesus said to that man, this day, not tomorrow, not after you die, not in your sweet by and by, but this day. See, every time we repent, the blood gives us legal right to receive a swift return. Ooh, glory. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? Yes. Every time we repent, the blood authorizes us to receive a swift return. I want you, wherever you are watching me tonight, I want you to join me in this prayer. And I want you to pray this. In Jesus' mighty name, wherever you are, I want you to get by yourself and get, get alone so that you can pray this. Because you need to enter 23 through the blood. In the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, tonight, I want you to remember me. I acknowledge there are sins, errors, mistakes that I did in 22 that you never authorized me to do. I acknowledge places, people, and things that I cut covenant with that you never authorized me to do. I want to say thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you for the blood of Christ. Blood of Christ, I acknowledge your life. It is I have chosen to thrust myself upon the altar. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Now, blood of Christ, wash me, cleanse me, empower me, that I may enter into 23 as white as snow. I denounce the spirit of pride in my life and in my lineage. Blood of Christ, pride ends tonight in my lineage. I rebuke the invitation 
that pride brings to me. And I give you authority, blood of Christ, to uproot and remove pride from me, my heart, and my lineage. Blood of Christ, now that pride is gone, help me to surrender to the spirit of humility that grace and you may partner with me in 2023. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise amen. God. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Jesus. Hallelujah. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, hallelujah, Lord. Freedom from pride. Hallelujah. Thank you, humility. Hallelujah. Thank hallelujah. You. Thank you, humility. Thank hallelujah. Thank Glory you. to God. Hallelujah. Wow. Come on. Truly. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I have one last instruction for you guys, okay? Now, <clears throat> The Lord says for us to take Exodus 12 and 7. And tonight, after you finish, after you finish here, go out and anoint your, your doorpost with the blood and, and, and say to the blood, I'm in a new year. So therefore, I rededicate this house and all the occupants in this house along with the property. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Go take Exodus 12 and 7. Go outside your door, anoint the two door posts and the lintel, okay? And say to the blood, blood of Christ, I am in a new year. So I rededicate this house, all the occupants and the land to you. I give you authority to cover, protect, and fill this house and land with the presence and life of the Father. Now fill this house with the harvest that's inside of you. Your health, let it be in this house. Your favor, let it be in this house. Your wealth, let it be in this house. Your grace, let it be in this house. Your joy, let it be in this house. Your redemption, let it be in this house. Blood of Christ, flood this house and this land. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? Praise God. Glory to amen. God. Praise amen. God. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Again, we're going to be for the next 30 days, 7 p.m. Meet us here. Glory to God right here on YouTube and on Zoom as we teach on the blood of Christ. We're going to be doing everything through the blood, everything that the blood offers us, we're going to do. Now, I want you on the 10th day, on the what? The 10th day, I want you to bring your basin. Okay, on the 10th day, we're going to fellowship with the blood. Okay, I'm going to have a prayer on the 10th day. On the what? Tenth day. Bring your basin of water, just like we did, you know, before, and just like in my book, uh, as we uh, pled the blood of Jesus and Jesus made the name, and the blood was a symbol. But on the tenth day, we're going to do a special fellowship with the blood. Hallelujah. A washing that the Lord has showed me. I'm so excited. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God bless you. If this word bless you, and you'd like to sow a seed tonight, you want to become a partner with this ministry, praise God. You can go to sonsofgodembassy.com, or you can cash out me at uh, money sign Robertson, the number 22. 
That's money sign, R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, and the number 22. There are different ways to give, but you can see on the screen right there. Glory to God, partner with us. But most of all, I want you to partner with me in Jesus' mighty name. We are fasting. Hallelujah. We are doing our first fruit. Join us on our fast. Be a part of this. Be a part of this supernatural wave of the blood that's going to flood your home, flood your family, flood your, your body, flood your, your mind. The blood is going to flood your children. It's going to flood your business. It's going to flood your finances. By 31 days, the blood's going to set the captive free. You might as well be a part of that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Join us. Join us, join us, join us for these 31 days with the blood. I'm Apostle Lee Robinson. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We appreciate you, Pastor April and I. We love you. Thank you for your prayers. Again, if you want me to partner with you in prayer, I'm going to be closed in for 31 days. Hallelujah. Praying and fasting. I'm going to be laying my hands on all the prayer requests. Get them to me. And he shall cover me at Yahoo. Again, that's he shall cover me at yahoo.com. Glory to God. Thank you again. Share this broadcast. Come on, tell somebody. Let them receive the blood of Christ. It is a powerful weapon. And it deserves to be in the conversation because the enemy hates the blood. He's afraid of the blood. God bless you. This is a